pretty big news. The deadline for cruise lines to opt into CDC's new voluntary program is coming up on February 18th, and there are some reasons that the cruise lines may not opt in. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now I have to say, I was really hoping that after the conditional sailing order expired, that finally in 2022, we could stop talking about the CDC. But of course, that is just not happening, at least not yet. And now we have the CDC's new voluntary program for cruise ships. And well, it is a little bit controversial to say the least. And CLIA and the cruise lines have mostly not had very good things to say. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit, but I'm also gonna talk about what happens if the cruise lines do opt out, because I do think that that actually is maybe a possibility. And I really would like to know from you as cruise passengers, what do you think of this? Do you think that the cruise line should opt in, should opt out? What does it mean for us? Now, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so firstly, let's go over briefly what this new voluntary program is for cruise ships by the CDC and really the issues that CLIA and the cruise lines have with this. So when it comes to the CDC's new voluntary program, on the most part, a lot of things are really very similar to the conditional sailing order, what the cruise lines have already been doing. Of course, we know they put so many um, different health and safety protocols into place and they've really been doing a very good job at this. CDC has even said so as well, that the cruise lines have really stepped up. However, when it comes to this new voluntary program, there are some aspects to it, some provisions that are actually more strict um, on the cruise lines. And what CLIA says is actually discriminatory towards the cruise industry. So one new provision for cruise ships is their vaccination status. So while we still have the color code system, and that has to do with how many COVID cases are on cruise ships. So the green status is no COVID cases. Then we go to yellow, uh, orange and red, etc. And that could be good information, I think, even for cruise passengers to know. Uh, however, the vaccination status, basically this is either a fully vaccinated ship, a highly vaccinated ship, or a not highly vaccinated cruise ship. Now at this point, most cruise lines are sailing either fully vaccinated or mostly vaccinated. So I'm not sure that this makes a very big difference, but perhaps this does leave leeway to some cruise lines who do want to have a less highly vaccinated cruise ship. Now, one of the biggest criticisms that has come from CLIA when it comes to this voluntary program is that it is sort of out of step with what is happening on land, with even what are the CDC's guidelines and health recommendations for on land, and really what is the trends in the travel industry towards loosening restrictions. So it looks like things will be very, very strict. And this includes the quarantining of passengers on cruise ships and even their close contacts and even the length of time that they would have to be quarantined for, which is longer than the recommendations in the United States. Now, another element that can be concerning for cruise lines and for CLIA is the fact that the CDC is asking for daily reporting of COVID cases, which they can disclose to the public. Now, as a member of the public, I of course do like to know what is going on, but I could also understand that if resorts aren't um, publishing how many COVID cases they have, airlines haven't been publishing how many COVID cases they have, Walmart hasn't been publishing them, Disney hasn't disclosed that. And for cruise lines to disclose this day by day does lead to sort of a discrimination against cruise ships when the number of cases on cruise ships may not be any different than on land and somehow any amount of cases is often treated as a huge outbreak by the mainstream media. Now, another element of concern by the cruise lines seems to have to do with the overreach of the CDC that goes perhaps beyond the health um, and safety practices and really into elements of their business. Now, this is something that I hadn't seen mentioned across many different articles, but I did see it in a travel industry publication that is called Cruise Week. And I thought that is an interesting um, dynamic to this because of course, any industry doesn't really want the CDC to be really involved in their business practices that don't 
include the managing of this public health situation. Now, I should also mention that although in a video that I made last week, we did speak about the fact that the CDC was hopefully going to lower their level four advisory for cruise ship travel to a level three, they have not done so, even though it was updated on, I believe, February 9th, they have left it at a level four travel advisory. And CLIA says that it's disappointed in this. They feel that it's discriminatory um, on cruise ships that nearly 100% of passengers and crew are vaccinated versus on land 63% and that people actually fare better on cruise ships than on land. So they really feel that these um, calling out the cruise industry and noting them as a level four advisory really just isn't fair to the cruise industry. So here's the big question. Do you think that any cruise lines might actually opt out? And as a cruise passenger, would you be in favor of that? Now, what happens if a cruise line does opt out or any cruise ships do opt out of this program? Well, they become a gray status. So basically they're not really tracked or followed uh, by the CDC. And if I'm not mistaken, what I had read was the CDC though still can issue orders to those gray ships. And if there is an outbreak, they can implement a no sale order. Now, of course, if they do opt out, it doesn't mean that they wouldn't have any health and safety and COVID measures, but they just wouldn't have that oversight from the CDC. So will the cruise lines opt in? They need to do so by February 18th. And if they don't, then they go into gray status. So Cruise Week did ask the different cruise lines and especially given CLIA's statements. Now, Norwegian Cruise Line, who had originally said that they would be opting in, well, CEO Frank Del Rio said this is before he saw uh, this document and the changes that were made from the conditional sailing order. And he does agree with CLIA's statements. According to Royal Caribbean, they are in the midst of reviewing this and will come out with, I guess, a statement or what they're going to do shortly. Carnival Cruise Lines says also that they agree with CLIA's statement overall. So it really does, um, we just have a few days left. It remains to be seen if the cruise lines are gonna opt in, if they're going to be negotiating with the CDC, maybe on some different aspects of this. Is this in the best interest of the public or should the cruise lines break free of the CDC? I don't know if that's even possible. So please let me know what you think. Personally, I would like to see things be less complicated, not only for the cruise industry, but for the cruise passenger. And I would like cruise lines to be able to adapt some of their protocols based on the real world situation. Of course, I always want safety and health to be first and foremost. And I think on the most part, cruise lines do this. So I hope they can find a way maybe to negotiate their way through this because I do think it's in the public's best interest to be able to have an idea of what is going on on cruises. But at the same time, such an extreme amount of oversight, I do think is discriminatory towards the cruise lines. But I would really like to know what you think, any suggestions, anything that you've heard, would you cruise on a cruise line that didn't take part in this voluntary program? Please let me know in the comments below. Now, if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.